Hi, my name is Phil Firon and I'm going to be showing you today how you can quickly transform a Word 2010 document using XSLT. So to start off with, I'm going to select an input file. And this just has two inputs. One is the, the key data file, which is a set of employees. And we can have a quick look at that. Okay, so that's the employees that we see here, and this is an OData format, which means that it basically follows uh, the Atom standard with uh, some extra extensions. So if we look at an entry, then we can go to content, and within that content there's a properties element, and so we've got one set of properties for each entry and if we can if we actually have a look at those properties so they're properties for each employee so for example we could have a look at the city for each employee there so what we want to do is take that input and if we have a look at uh, our word template that we're going to be using so we need to um, switch to an HTML viewer for this this actually launches um, Word within Coherent Web when you switch to HTML. So, so now we can have a look at this document and it's these uh, cells here in the middle column of the table that need to be modified with data from employees.xml. And also in this table is an image and that has to be copied from employees.xml as well. In fact, I'll just quickly switch back to um, this view where we can have a look uh, at that image that we have. In fact, it's better to switch to the XML viewer because then we can see the base64 more properly. So there we go. Um, so there's an element here that has got a base64 content that needs to be converted to an image file. So the only other file that we need to consider is the actual XSLT file and that's uh, I've already got that selected here um, and then the next thing is just to run it. So let's have a look. We've got our principal output and then a number of additional uh, result documents. These are actually produced through extensions to XSLT, which I'll explain in detail uh, later on. But if um, I switch to the HTML view again to get a word back, I can go through each one of these output files and see that we've got a different Word document with data that has been imported from employees.xml file and also we've got an image that has also been imported from that file. So let's just choose another couple of files at random. Okay, so that was our transform. So how did we actually achieve that using XSLT? Well, first of all, we need to understand a bit about the structure of the Word document. So if we go back to this, and in fact, let's, um, in the configure pane, if I uncompress that content and then bring up the folder view, what it shows is that a Word document is in fact a zip file with a number of directories within it. And the two directories we're interested in is a directory called Word and a directory called Media. Now the directory called Word has got document.xml, so this is the key story of that document, and so that is the one that we need to modify. And also within media, we have image1.png file, and so that's what we need to change to get a different image in the table. So the next thing to look at then is how we can describe that using XSLT. So if I close these down and go to um, look at our XSLT now, so switch to the XSLT view, and there are two EXPath 
extensions that we're using within this XSLT file. As you can see, uh, we don't actually need a great deal to describe the changes that need to be done. Effectively, we're performing an identity transform on this document. So the first thing that we need to do is to build an element that describes the zip directory structure and content that we're going to be modifying. And so in this style sheet, this is achieved using the file element, which has got a hierarchy that corresponds to the hierarchy of the input Word document. So, for example, the first directory element is named Word, and within that it's got an entry called document.xml. So that is the XML file that we're going to be modifying. And then if we go down, we see that within that Word directory, there's also a media directory. And here there's another entry, but this time it's the image file, image1.png. It's set so that there's no compression and we're outputting using base64 and also there's a, a minor change to the the basic XPath standard because we need to um, miss out the first 78 bytes when we convert the base64 so that's what that offset is for so once we have the zip file element that's actually stores in a very vari variable called zip and so this brings us to the first EXPath extension that we're using which is called update entries and this is it here update entries so it takes two arguments the first is that element that we just created and the second is simply a URI telling us where to actually output the new Word document I should also add that the key part of this file element is this href here which actually points to that Word document that we were just looking at which is the main template that we're modifying and so this second output argument is the URI for the new Word document that we're going to be creating so that is where all the, the main logic is for actually creating the new zip file structure and you can see that one key part when we're actually creating document.xml is we take the original document from the word template and we just apply an identity transform to it now it's another extension function is used when we actually extract the document.xml because it's within a zip compressed file we have to use um, uh, well this is actually a reference to a variable source doc so if we actually have a look at where source doc comes from we can see that it's using an ex path function called xml entry and that just takes in the uri of the word template and then as the second argument it's the entry location for document.xml which is within the word directory so that is it really so far as the the main uh, transform goes just to quickly show you uh, the identity transform that is performed that's the, the the key part of the identity transform which converts document.xml and just going down here we can see that uh, we've just got one template that matches that second column and inserts in new data for each column and we've just got a row variable that we've set up so we know what row we're in each time that template is called so as you can see this corresponds to the OData input file and therefore once this transform is complete that is how we end up with those documents because uh, you can also see that this uh, this whole transform is 
enclosed within a for each loop um, which actually uh, works on each entry in turn so a new word document is created for each entry file okay that concludes this demonstration so this was showing XSLT being used with EXPath zip extensions to modify a Word 2010 document and Coherent Web is the application used for this.